Oh my gosh, a dietitian nutritionist not recommending that everybody choose to eat organic? Whores. Despite what the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 says? Don't know what those are? Stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Neely with Neely on Nutrition. My first job as a registered dietitian nutritionist was working at the County Hospital Parkland here in Dallas. County hospitals are known for working with the um, underserved population, and I loved my job. I was there almost seven years, and I loved my patients. Quite honestly, though, in some cases, I would be thrilled if they had eaten a fruit or a vegetable a week, <laughs> let alone every day. I know, kind of crazy. If I told my patients that they should choose foods, organic that are in this dirty dozen, I would be doing a tremendous disservice to them. What is the dirty dozen? Well, every spring, the Environmental Working Group, which is an advocacy organization, publishes a guide and it's based on test results uh, by a comprehensive pesticide residue database by the USDA. And they create these lists. One of the lists, which is the top 12 leading amounts of pesticide residue in produce, they deem those the dirty dozen. And then at the bottom of the list, um, they call those the clean 15, those that have the least amount of pesticide residue. Now, let me just say that the Environmental Working Group, they are funded in part by big organic marketers um, and have financial ties to the industry. You know, you've probably heard of big pharma. Well, there actually is big organic. What's my issue with the Dirty Dozen list and the Clean 15? The problem is, is that it creates fear. It's this fear-based marketing that is so prevalent in our food industry and we just need people to eat more fruits and vegetables. And it's frustrating. I was looking online, came across this YouTube channel, this quite large, a YouTuber, and this is what he had to say talking about the Dirty Dozen. I want to go over them in depth because some of the Dirty Dozen is scary dirty. I mean, we're talking so many pesticides. We're talking also poisonous gas in the uh, soil that leaves it basically sterile. It's terrible. Talk about putting fear into someone. Oh my gosh, thinking that they should consume organic, especially when it comes to certain foods. Now, let me say too, when I worked at Cooper Clinic, I used to write for their Cooper Health Magazine, and I wrote an article in 2008, and I actually referenced the Dirty Dozen and um, the Clean 15. However, I've since learned a lot since that time. That's what I want to talk to you about today. When you hear organic food, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Maybe you think it's healthier, more nutritious, that it's pesticide free? Newsflash, organic, Produce uses pesticides. The organic seal does not mean pesticide free. Um, pesticides are made from plants um, as well as several synthetic ones. The electronic code of federal regulation uh, has a national list of allowed and prohibited substances in organic food. And actually in this subsection, there are sub synthetic substances that are allowed for use in organic crop production including pesticides. So organic produce is not pesticide free. In a study, low income shoppers and fruit and vegetables, messages naming specific fruits and vegetables with pesticides shifted participants towards less likely to purchase any type of fruit and vegetable, regardless whether organically or conventionally grown. That's not a good message. Now, certainly people have what we call food privilege. And there are food elitists who think that that's the only way, but my experience back at Parkland Hospital, if I encourage people that they had to buy organic, no. Let me show you this really cool resource by the um, Alliance of Food and Farming. It's a Safe Fruits and Veggies. It has a calculator on here, a pesticide residue calculator. So let's check it out. Let's go ahead and calculate something. All right, let's start calculating. I eat grapes. I always have grapes. 
I rarely don't have them. I keep them frozen in the freezer. So let's take a look. A woman would cons could consume 672 servings of grapes in one day without any effect, even if those grapes had the highest pesticide residue recorded for grapes by the USDA. That's pretty crazy, okay? So no need to be concerned, but let's go ahead and just check another one. And let's just say that I'm a child, okay? So, and kids eat lots of apples. So what about apples? A child could consume 340 servings of apple in one day without any effect. So don't let this fear mongering that pesticide residue is horribly high, it's not, okay? I'll have the link to this resource in my description. If you like this information, do me a favor, look at me a little boop, little thumbs up, let the algorithm know that you like it so more people can see this content. You know, a colleague of mine, Caroline Susie, on Instagram the other day posted, thanks a lot, EWG. Seriously, we're already struggling to consume enough fruits and veggies as it is. We should be emphasizing more wholesome foods regardless. The focus shouldn't be on synthetic pesticides. It really draws away from the real problem, which is just inactivity, poor diets, stress. If buying organic food makes you feel better and you can afford it, do it. That's your prerogative. But if you can't afford it, don't feel guilty that you can't. Focus on what fits into your budget and focus on feeding your family just wholesome, more nutrient-rich foods. Buy locally, buy seasonally, support your farmer's markets and local farmers. Remember to always wash your produce well. And just bottom line, eat your fruits and veggies, regardless whether they're organically or conventionally grown. Thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition. We'll see you in the next video. I'm gonna eat my frozen grape now. Like eating candy.